안녕하십니까? 니콜라스입니다. 김치 조합니다. On this video, I am going to talk about um, five things I think you should learn in 2018. We'll say you shouldn't follow the trend, blah, 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 blah. But let me tell you this. There are two kinds of football player. One football player is the one that runs behind the ball and catches it eventually. But the other one is the football player that goes where the ball is going to go. That one is the one that will make a goal. You should be that football player, the one that, go, that runs before the ball gets there. Number five, Jest. Jest is a testing library for JavaScript and React components. Testing is very important if you work in teams. And many people in many job descriptions are asking for somebody that knows how to test React components. Testing doesn't mean you put a React component, you click it and it works. Or if you see it, it works. Testing means with programming, programmatically testing the component. It means saying, for example, this component should render this text if I give him this prop. This component should render this error if this happens. Like You can describe many use cases of the, of the component and you can see if the test passes or not. We don't have a course in test, but it's, prom it's coming, I promise you. Number four, TypeScript. TypeScript is taking over the world. This is because the ecosystem of TypeScript is very, very good and very friendly for TypeScript. One, TypeScript is uh, by Microsoft, so Microsoft is pushing it like a motherfucker. Second, TypeScript has very good compatibility with VS Code, Visual Studio Code, and Visual Studio Code is also by Microsoft, but Visual Studio Code is one of the most used text editors. So it makes sense that the people that use VS Code we learn TypeScript because it's very friendly for them to develop on TypeScript on VS Code. Also, many companies are adopting TypeScript. I don't know about Korean companies, I think they are, but for example, PayPal is adopting TypeScript 100%, Microsoft did also 100%, so this is huge. Number three, GraphQL. GraphQL is gonna be even more huge this year, and this is because there are many more things being built around GraphQL because it's such a good idea. It's not gonna replace REST, but it's a very good idea. Why? Because it's a different way of transmitting data. So because of this, we have stuff like Gatsby, which is a static React site generator that works only 100% with GraphQL. Also, we have stuff like GraphCMS, which is a CMS, a content management system, built on GraphQL that allows you to do your own content like a WordPress, but on GraphQL, super cool. And also, we have other stuff like Prisma that allows you to manage your database only with GraphQL without writing any kind of SQL or anything like that. There is also a Prisma course coming soon in React, in React Academy, in Nomad Academy. Also, many big companies are using GraphQL. Facebook, of course, because they created GraphQL, but also Airbnb, for example, they use GraphQL 100%. Uh, number two, React Hooks. Uh, React Hooks is a new part of React that is gonna be merged into the official React package in February 4, 2019. React Hooks makes your React class components into uh, functional components. It's a very big step towards functional programming from the React community. And it was a proposal before, this means that they didn't put it on the official package because it was a proposal, but people liked it, they improved it, they asked questions, they fixed bugs, and now it's gonna come into the official package, which means that it's going to have even more adoption um, now, and we're going to be able to build better and cleaner React JS applications. We're gonna have a React Hooks course coming soon in the React JS subscription in Nomad Academy. And number one, finally, and I think that this is the, the biggest game changer of all, is serverless. Serverless is the way that we don't write a backend. We just don't write a backend. We use backends as a service. We use authentication as a service. We use database as a service. We use the tit as a service. Uh, and we build our only our frontend, and we just call those APIs. For example, we have AWS Lambda, which is um, a way that I just pay for the execution time of my function. For example, I don't have to have a server running 24 hours. I just pay for the amount of time a, a, a user uses one function. Or for example, we have AWS Incognito, uh, no, Cognito, which is authentication as a service, which means I don't have to write any of the annoying 
login, logout, password, reset password, and uh, all that bullshit. I don't have to do it. AWS does it for me. So it's super, super cool because it's a lot, it allows us to, uh, to focus on building the product rather than building the backend and the most boring parts like authentication, like databases, like bullshit like that. Uh, that's just one example of all the stuff that serverless can do. And we're going to launch a serverless course as soon as we can. So yes, that's it. Learn these five and you will make money this year and the next year and the next year because those five, I think, are going to take over web development. I will see you in 2020 and we're going to look at this video and see if I was wrong or if I was right in my predictions. It will be fun. Thank you for watching. Leave a like, leave a comment. Let me know which of these five things are you more excited about. Also, let me know if I missed one and you think that something is better, more trendy than Jest or more trendy than GraphQL. Let me know. Thank you for watching. Love you all. See you soon. Bye-bye.